From the time Stacey London burst onto the public scene with her 2002 debut in TLC's What Not to Wear, she has spoken openly about her experiences in the fashion world. Her no-nonsense, edgy humor made her an instant star on the show, and the good news is she wasn't faking it. There's a very real person with a lot of depth behind all that style imagination. Let's take a look at some of the lesser-known facts about Stacey London. Her Signature Silver Streak one of London's signature looks is the silver streak of hair that frames her face. What people might not know about the natural highlight is that she's had it since she was a kid. When she was six years old, London was diagnosed with psoriasis, an autoimmune disease that can cause a rough, scaly rash anywhere on a person's skin. Then, when she was 11, she dealt with repeated bouts of strep throat that wound up sending her psoriasis into overdrive. She woke up one day completely covered in red scales and spent the next two years dealing with cracked, scaly skin and full-body rashes that even covered her scalp. Growing up, I felt ashamed. I felt embarrassed. Um, I felt afraid. To treat the rash on her scalp, she had to cover it with tar every night, which her mother would then scrub off with boric acid each morning. She eventually got so tired of this that she shaved off her long dark hair and opted for a crew cut. And although it made the tar and boric acid treatments easier, London wrote in her 2012 book The Truth About Style that the haircut didn't just make me feel less girly, it made me feel less human. She eventually found a topical steroid that cleared up the psoriasis, and when her hair grew back, the silver streak emerged. And she's run with it ever since, calling it a badge of honor. Body Image Issues When contestants on What Not to Wear were facing their own struggles with weight and not feeling comfortable in their own skin, London could relate. After the misery of her experience with psoriasis, during which time she was relentlessly bullied by the kids at her school, London developed body dysmorphia, which she struggled with ever since. During her youth, for a long time she didn't want to look at herself in the mirror. London admits that when she does look at her reflection, what she sees is not necessarily reality. The reality show alum has battled anorexia, which left her hospitalized in her 20s. Her weight eventually stabilized, but she struggled again when she quit smoking in 2008, gaining 15 pounds in three months. This drained the show's resources. Since the budget didn't allow for a new wardrobe, she had to fit into the clothes she had. She explained her feelings to the Washington Post, saying, "...it affected me. I was very moody, embarrassed, and disappointed in myself." Smarts to Spare London's whip-smart quickness on camera are thanks in part to her impressive academic credentials. In addition to her incisive fashion advice, London graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Vassar College in upstate New York with a degree in philosophy and German literature. She credits her father with the decision to study something apart from fashion, even though that was her desired field, saying, "...my father gave me great advice. He told me, you should go to college and study what you love. You should study something that teaches you lifelong skills, like how to write, read, and think critically. You can take that and do anything with it." Indeed, shortly after college, she landed a job at Vogue and began climbing the ladder from there. She went on to become a senior fashion editor at Mademoiselle magazine, but four years into her dream job, a new editor-in-chief came and gave London the boot. While London was understandably disappointed with being let go, she has said that she was glad to have experienced the blow because it taught her how to really pull herself back up. If you can see yourself in a new way, then you can believe yourself in a new way. TV as a happy accident Although London is a natural fit for a TV role, it's not something she ever set out to do. After leaving Mademoiselle, London was working as a freelance stylist when her agent called and said that there was a small screen stylist opportunity and she might be a good fit. She did four screen tests over the course of eight months. But with the high level of competition at play for the job, she was sure she wouldn't be the one to land the role. She was on vacation in Spain with her family when her agent called and told her that she was one of 27 finalists who were asked to come in for a fifth screen test, and she almost didn't go. She remembered, I said, what do you mean? If they want me, I've done all these screen tests. Why do I have to do another one? I'm not leaving Spain. I hung up the phone and my stepmother said, we're putting you on a plane tomorrow and you're going to do the screen test and it's going to change your life. As it turns out, those were wise and very true words from her stepmom. Commentary cutdowns. Although what not to wear proved to be her biggest career break, it came with its own struggles. London detailed the downsides of having a public profile in an article for Refinery29, writing, "...when I started what not to wear, people hated me. They said I was a bitch, that I had no right to tear people down. And who in the hell did I think I was in the first place?" She eventually explained that any criticism she offered guests of the show was simply part of the routine, to help break down their blind spots and build them back up with a sense of self-esteem they deserved. Of course, there were some times she was a bit nicer about it than others. We're gonna trash all this crap. Style change While she was on What Not to Wear, London wore lots of dresses and pencil skirts. And while she looked indisputably fabulous, those clothes aren't really her jam anymore. After the show ended, she was ready to say goodbye to the floral pencil skirt and stilettos aesthetic once and for all, telling the Huffington Post, "...it's not like I don't love a stiletto, but hey, I had hamstring surgery. I'm 45, you know, some things have to change." Now that she's able to make more of her own style choices, she's been much more drawn to suits, leather, and pants than to the girly outfits featured on the show. She thinks people might be surprised by some of the things she's sporting around 
town without the cameras in tow. Hey, as the show is so often promoted, it's never too late for a style change. Thanks for watching. Click the list icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.